What's up, everyone? Welcome to Movie Importance TV review of Westworld Season 3, Episode 5, Genre. Uh, before we begin, please hit that subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell top to find out what's coming next, and uh, comment below on any videos to watch my channel. So, I'm just going to flat out say that was an incredible episode. It really was. It was an episode that I was not really on board with at the beginning because it was a lot of, there's a lot of movie pieces in this episode that are kind of slowly coming together and what this entire season is about, which is about letting loose that control that people have on other people. And it became an episode that was so kind of dynamic and dynamic and fun and thrilling and exciting that I completely was engrossed by it. This is one of the best episodes of the season. Uh, it's not as good as the last episode because that was insanely good. Uh, that was one of the best episodes of the series, but this is pretty close. This episode is a very interesting one because there's a lot of different things going on. You know, in the beginning of this episode, we have kind of an idea of the Vince Cassell Sarek character and what he is and what he is pertaining in this series. He basically created this, I don't know if it was a machine, it's like a machine or an AI that can basically see people's lives, can predict how they're going to die, how they're going to live out their life. And he has been hoarding this with the his brother who slowly starts to go insane because he starts to kind of, you know, I'm, I'm assuming he's starting to see his life and see how it's going to portray and how it's going to end. But they have this like big sphere, which is really cool to look at. It looks like something out of like 2001 A Space Odyssey. And that's what this movie is a lot, or this episode is a lot like. It was like 2001 meets called Clockwork Orange meets, you know, something that like Christopher Nolan would do because of course, you know, Jonathan Nolan's is his brother. And so we see the Sarah character and his brother go into partnership with the father of the Liam Dempsey Jr. character, who which is played by John Gallery Jr. And it's a very interesting thing because the brothers have invented this thing and the father of the Liam Dempsey character wants to use it to make money and they wanted to use it to kind of make control of the whole entire world to have that knowledge to make money and so on and so forth and it's just a really fascinating look into characters and how they are slowly manipulated into control and stuff like that and it plays out later on we see snippets through the, the, at the beginning of the season with each episode we see this like weird kind of if you ever seen arrivals that weird black like a um, smoke shape thing but it tells us like different locations and different anomalies apparently it's part of this sphere that like you know can tell you can tell the uh Sarek character exactly where this is going on that's why he's able to can tell where everybody's at where he's able to go and so on and so forth when they want to show pieces of the past we go into that you know smoke to see the whole past segment play out so we see Sarek his brother they build the machine and you know goes further and further into the future they eventual conclusion where the Liam Dempsey Jr. character, uh, his father confronts his uh, the Sarek character and the Sarek ends up killing him. So it's a very interesting kind of way to kind of go full circle on the whole entire character arc. But then we have on the other aspect, we have Sarek trying to go after Dolores because she has initial plans in her book to try and cause anarchy and chaos throughout the world. Well, how she is doing that is basically using the people that she has either killed or has, you know, conformed into, you know, her other AI personas. And she basically uses a Tommy Flanagan character, the uh, Martin Connellis character who she is inhabiting because he's now an AI to infiltrate Insight, which is what Liam uh, Dempsey Jr.'s character owns and runs, which is where that big spear's at, which is a total control. And they basically, her plan is to release all this information that has been stowed away in this machine to everyone in the world. So you and I, who are just simpleton type people, and she basically allows people to see their future, allows people to see their past, allows pe people to see how they're gonna die. You know, when she's talking to Aaron Paul's character of um, Caleb in like the second or third episode or whatever it is, and she talks about how she knows he's gonna die in like, you know, 10 years or whatever, when he jumps off and commits suicide, this is what it's talking about. So when we see the whole entire, the whole entire world starts seeing their, you know, how everything's gonna play out. If you knew how you were gonna die, what would you do? 
it causes mass chaos mass you know anarchy which is what she wants and that is completely fascinating that is completely insane to think about i mean if you're watching a, if you're watching a series you're watching a tv show this is the kind of stuff that wouldn't get revealed to like the last episode of the season it just doesn't work out like that but lisa joy and jonathan nolan and everybody who's worked on this entire series they have you know created you know the ability to give us you know the explanations to kind of uh take that mystery box and open it as each episode is playing out and the fact that we're able to get you know the entire idea of what her plan is in the fifth episode of an eight episode season is incredible and you watch the chaos that's starting to unfold with uh you know people fighting once among another you know you see a woman with her child and we find out the child's gonna be committing suicide in like five or six years which is really depressing you start seeing bikes on uh, on fire you start seeing things explode you know the uh, tammy flanagan character basically him and um the palm clematif character who is uh, kind of working for Sarek, they go up and they're confronted and we see a like hologramic picture of Sarek who's talking to the tommy flanagan character and all of a sudden, the, Tom, the Martin character basically causes an explosion in the room. And there's a really amazing sequence where we basically see, from the Sarek point of view, we see the explosion happening. All of a sudden, we see parts of human anatomy start exploding and dissolving. All of a sudden, the feed goes blank. It's like one of my favorite scenes in the entire episode because it's just like... You're watching everything explode. And you're like, holy crap, that's amazing. But it's exactly what is happening and what is going for in this episode which is what dolores's plan is which is to create art anarchy and we find out that not only is dolores's plan maybe a little too excessive you know because of what caleb is dealing with and what he kind of is misunderstanding but Sarek may not be on the level as well Sarek, we've come to kind of believe that maybe he is trying to make the world a safer place from these ai artificial intelligent robots or androids or whatever you want to call them but maybe he's not on the level. He wants total control. We're starting to see that as this series, the season runs through, which is really fascinating. But overall, the episode is just amazing. Anna Forster, who directed the episode, does an amazing job. She's known for doing a lot of director photography, aerial stuff. This is written by uh, Carrie Krauss and Jonathan Nolan, which makes a lot of sense with Jonathan Nolan being kind of the architecture architect behind the series with Lisa Joy. They're kind of, you know, putting the pieces together. But this episode also has a lot of humor, has a lot of, you know, good action. There's a sequence in here where it's straight out of, I, I, don't, I don't like to compare, you know, brothers and stuff like that, but this action sequence is straight out of like some like the Dark Knight, where the cars are basically chasing after one another. You have like the bag, I think the bad guys of Sarek or something like that are chasing after, you know, Liam Dempsey Jr. character who's now kind of uh, kidnapped from Dolores. And they're in the middle of the, you know, the LA streets and stuff like that. And there's like explosions going all over the place. We see, you know, because they need the encryption key to basically take over the whole entire system of insight. But they also, she also needs the ability to get away. So she gets, she convinces the Dempsey character to, you know, unlock his, you know, abilities and stuff like that on the computer to give them, you know, full control. And it's just the action sequence is awesome. It doesn't really kind of hinge on anything in the entire story. It's just a cool action sequence where we see cars explode, where we see cool gunplay, where we see cool, you know, Lena Waithe comes back in this and, and Marshawn Lynch come back into this. They haven't been in for a few episodes. So it's nice to see them come back, even though they don't really kind of, you know, they don't really like push the story very much forward. They're just in it as, you know, people that are helping them out and stuff like that. But it's a really cool action set piece, really cool action sequence. It leads into like one of my favorite things in the entire series where the Liam Dempsey character injects Caleb with this drug of some sort, which is called genre, which is what this episode is named. <laughs> and it's an amazing sequence because this is a very heavy handed episode, but it's dealt with some humor where basically Caleb is experiencing different levels of feeling and emotion but it's done through like songs and stuff like that. So we have like a rise of the Valkyries when the big action set piece is happening going on, you know, you see like the different modes and feels and stuff like that. There's one moment at the very beginning where everything goes black and white, which very makes it feel very noir and so on and so forth. Uh, there's a point where he becomes like love induced, where he starts seeing uh, Dolores in a different light. And just the looks and like ideas and stuff like that is really funny to watch on Aaron Paul's face. 
And then there's a point where um, he we get this Iggy Pop song. And I think it's like No Club or something like that. It's a really amazing because there's a lot of you know neons and a lot of blinking lights and stuff like that. It's just really, really unique and really kind of awesome. But that's just this episode in a nutshell. You know, it's actually furthering the story along in a way that doesn't happen in a lot of TV shows. You know, they know they only have eight episodes seasons. They look at Game of Thrones in the last season. It was like all over the place. Things were happening. There was no rhyme or reason or logic to it. And it's not really good to compare the last season of Game of Thrones to the third season of, you know, uh, Westworld. But Westworld season three has done something that not a lot of TV shows have done, which is make something kind of compact, but make it make sense, make it move forward at a nice, brisk pace, but also giving us the information that we need. And the reason I say it's like Game of Thrones season eight, because there was a lot of problems going on with that season where there was a lot of, you know, they were trying to do too much and then they didn't have enough, you know, episodes to do it with. And that's not what is happening here. We're getting the uh, answers. We're getting the clues. Yes, I don't like the fact that there's a moment where, unfortunately, the John Gallagher Jr. character dies uh, by the Lena Waithe character. And he has information on the Caleb character that we don't get, which is fine. You don't have to give all the answers away. But when you're dealing with, you know, Caleb, who apparently has a much bigger role, we're starting to see some more back history. We're starting to see some things where... Apparently he might not be as good of a character as we think he is like on the, on the, as, as a person himself. And I think that could be really a unique take and really interesting, but we're left at a kind of a, a cliffhanger moment with that. And then of course we have our kind of showdown between Dolores and the Sarah character, which is done, of course, by the hologram and stuff like that. And we're going to see a, we're starting to see the King and Queen, the pawn start moving in place to kind of, get us our ideas and ideologies of what this season is going to end up entailing, which is a complete disruption of the entire universe, the world, whatever you want to call it, which I think is going to come to a head. I think maybe Dolores is going to die at the end of the season. I don't know. Maybe Bernard is going to die. Maybe the Caleb character, you know, sacrifice himself. I don't know. It's really interesting to see Bernard. There was a comment left in my video of my last review where it says where she infected everyone. Obviously, she hasn't infected Bernard because Bernard is his own person. Maybe we're just not seeing anything, but I'm seeing Bernard as his own version of himself, which maybe is what Dolores wanted. But apparently he's going to be some place play some big part in the, you know, the coming ends of the season. But yeah, this this episode is uh, it's good. It's really good. If I were to rate it, I'd give it another nine out of ten. You know, the beginning, like I said, it was a little kind of worrisome because I was like, where is this going? But once we got the Dolores, what her plan was, how it played out, how the fact that she is kind of winning, that the Sarah character isn't, you know, the tides are turning, how Caleb is starting to kind of wonder and start to kind of question what her motives are. It's it's a really good episode. It really is. I think it's on point, and I think it really kind of just shrugs off what happened in season two. I think the fact that this season feels really different, it gives us really interesting motives for characters. It makes us root and not root for characters back and forth. Uh, the next episode is gonna be really interesting because it does look a lot like Clockwork Orange with what's happening with the Man in Black, with uh, you know William and stuff like that. But yeah, that's genre. There's a lot of stuff going on with that I was not expecting when I first watched the episode, started watching it. So, uh, but yeah, that's my take on genre. I know it was like a little bit all over the place, but it's a really fascinating, really kind of unique episode that's dealing with a lot of good stuff. So anyways, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of the episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you feel the season's uh, turned around? from the last season. Do you think it's a much better season? I definitely do. But anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next and uh, comment below on any video that you watch my channel. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace out. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.